Hello everyone, welcome to NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. In the last class we were discussing about uh, the filtration process and the resistance offered by the deposition of the cake uh, from the slurry and also the, uh, the resistance offered by the filter medium. Okay. Now, today we will uh, continue uh, some uh, more things in the mechanical separation techniques. We have discussed different kind of filters, okay? uh, cross flow filters and dead end filters, cake filters etcetera. So, uh, today we will continue with that the cake filters uh, although it is used mostly for this uh, uh, kind of the slurry separation, but there are some problem that can be observed at the initiation of the, uh, the filtration operation. What is the problem? The problem is some solid particles, some solid particles enter into the pores of the filter medium okay, and they are immobilized and because of that they uh, hinder the path of the liquid to flow. Okay. So, that there is that is one problem we often encounter uh, the a cake of appreciable thickness builds up on the surface and that must be periodically removed. So, that the, uh, the filtration process the rate of filtration will be uh, uh, constant. Then this is this cake filters are used almost entirely for liquid solid separation, but there are some exception such as bag filters that is used for the gas cleaning. And also this cake filters may operate with above atmospheric or with vacuum level. Okay. So, this is uh, also a specific uh, you know characteristics of this kind of filter. So, we can operate this at, at vacuum also and also the above atmospheric pressure. It can be continuous or discontinuous, but because of the difficulty of discharging the solid against a positive pressure, most pressure filters are of discontinuous type. Okay. Next we will see the bag filters. So, bag filters although uh, these are uh, now replaced by uh, different kind of uh, filters which has which has uh, you know some advanced design aspects than the bag filter but if you look into the application of this or the operation of this bag filter there are a number of there are a number of long thin bags are attached okay these are attached to a horizontal frame horizontal feed tray and the liquid flows through this okay when the liquid is coming through this under the action of gravity so that the rate of filtration per unit area is very low because here uh, it is coming down because of gravity we are not applying any uh, pressure over here so that's why uh, the rate is a bit slow and it is possible to arrange a large filtering area in the plan which can be go as high as 700 meter square and usually arranged in two sections. So, that each may be inspected separately without interpreting the uh, interrupting the operation. So, uh, this is how it is it is coming into and then the filter uh, inlet is here okay, and the filter outlet when this uh, liquid when is, is going through this uh, um, bag the, the thin filters it is going out and then at the central location there is a uh, filter outlet section okay, and the solids that has been filtered will be discharged from the bottom. Now, there are uh, industrial filters can be categorized into different groups for example, gravity filters, vacuum filters, pressure filter and centrifugal filters. 
gravity filters these are uh, the simple one which is employing thick granular beds and these are widely used in filtration water filtration specifically for example the sand filters so different uh, uh, you know different sizes of uh, sand and and bigger particles etc we uh, we stack it the stack will be from the uh, from the finer to the coarser particle like that so we'll have we'll have a diagram so the sand is there and then gradually we are having gravel or coarser particle and the inlet of water is from from the top section okay from here and then it is uh, coming and then liquid the clear liquid that is um, that will be filtered and that will be going out from this outlet another will be the vacuum filter vacuum filters operate practically at higher pressure higher pressure differential than the gravity filters it may be continuous or batch type and the most useful vacuum filters again can be categorized into two uh, distinct uh, types one is the rotary vacuum filter another is the leaf filter okay so we'll see one by one that how the rotary vacuum filter will perform and how the bag filter will perform so first we'll see the rotary vacuum filter or also this is called rotary filter sometime so in large scale operation or continuous operation uh, is sometime desirable and it may be necessary to filter slurries containing high proportion of solids so the rotary filter is a uh, is a continuous uh, system and has a system for removing the cake that is form over the surface of the drum so it is suitable for use with concentrated slurries and it can be uh, the rotary filter for continuous operation on large scale quantities of the slurry that is one uh, use where where the large scale uh, slurry to to be filtered uh, at a quite high rate and the other is the suitable for slurry contains considerable amount of solid in the range of 15 to 30 percent so this is the range of solid that can be handled by rotary vacuum filter uh however if we see that the the continuous rotary vacuum filter design so the there is a drum there is a drum which is rotating at a defined speed and that speed is based on many parameter that uh, at what rate the filtration is required what is the concentration of the slurry what thickness of the cake is uh, can be deposited and can be taken out from the knife so uh, so considering all that we can fix the um, revolution of this drum it is submerged into the slurry to certain thickness okay and uh, there is a uh, there's a vacuum uh, pump is there which is creating vacuum inside the uh, inside the drum in uh, near the section where the where the submerged Uh, submergence has been done because it is creating the negative pressure and because of that this uh, filter process filtration process will takes place so there is a filter vat slurry which is feeding continuously and this is rotating formation of the cake will be there as the filtration will proceed and the filtrate which is uh, which because of the negative pressure because of the vacuum will will come from uh, this to this section okay and this will collect here in the in the filtered collection channel and this will be taken out by the filtrate pump and there is a deposition the cake deposition over the surface and one knife is attached uh, and and its its distance or gap at the surface of the drum also can be uh, adjustable because uh, we we need to fix it based on the thickness that is being deposited on the drum and it will uh, cut that uh, you know thick layer and that that way it can remove it so this can operate continuously 
However, there is some limitation. The limitation is this uh, not working for coarse or fast settling particles of solid. Okay. This is not working for the coarse or fast settling particles of solid. Why? Because the coarse particles cannot be suspended well in the slurry trough and the cake that forms often will not adhere to the surface of the, uh, the filtered drum. Okay. So, in this situation a top fed horizontal filter may be used. Now, so horizontal uh, belt filter as we have mentioned that for the coarse feed we can use the, this one. So, this is uh, this looks like the diagram we have presented here where there is a main frame okay, and there is a filter medium here these are the filter medium and there is uh, so here the vacuum pump is also there which is creating a negative pressure inside the the uh, the other side of, of the filter medium there is a feed box okay, and here also the belt speed can be arranged the drive mechanism can be um, given to that uh, to, to provide the motion to the belt okay. and cake discharge mechanism that is also at the end. So, one section when, when it, it proceed to the other section by the time the filtration has been done because of the negative pressure and the cake deposition at the end has been removed by some suitable uh, mechanism or some knife or blade arrangement etcetera. So, this can be used for the coarser feed and since it is it is not as I said that because of the coarser particle it is not sticking as a cake most of the time. So, that the, the deposition can be discarded at the end. Then coming to the leaf filter. So, the leaf filter the various arrangements can be observed like this. This is a uh, typical sketch and this is a exact uh, a small prototype of the leaf filter where we can see that the slurry inlet section is there and it goes to each and every leaf okay. and in between there is a uh, filter media. So, when the slurry uh, this, this can be filtered from any of this vessel the cake can be washed simply by immersing the filter in a vessel of water. Removal of the cake is facilitated by the use of reverse air flow and most satisfactory if the solid content of the slurry is not too high that is 5 percent being a suitable maximum. So, we can see that uh, whether in case of a uh, rotary drum we can handle slightly higher concentration but in, in this case we, we cannot go as high uh, cannot go for a higher concentration uh, more than 5 percent solid concentration. Okay. So, when the slurry comes into it there is a leaf individual leaves and this is the section where the filter outlet is there. So, when it, it comes here it is it is going through this uh, medium okay, and then it, it comes to this section and the filtrate is going out or, or to be collected as per requirement. Okay. So, leaf filter which we, we can also call it we uh, call it the constant pressure filter because here the different uh, pressure difference across which the filtration takes place that is constant and we can increase or decrease the number of uh, leaf uh, or, or the plates that we are using. Uh, this is also based on the capacity of the plant uh, we, we can upscale or downscale as per requirement. So, there is a frame okay. there is a frame with that we have uh, with that we have plates. So, between two frame one plate is attached okay. every two frame there is one plate and when the slurry comes into uh, the filter medium 
Okay. So, it is entered into this section and then whatever filtration clear filtration will have through the filter medium, it will collect in a channel and the filtrate will uh, collect it from the other section. There is a filter cloth between uh, every filter and, and, the, and the plates. Okay. So, every plate between every plate and uh, uh, filter there is a filter cloth. So, there is we can see that when some plates are operative we can have some backup plate when the capacity increases we can make it uh, you know workable and if it is not required we can fix it like that. And uh, uh, the, uh, the operation is same this is just a clear picture and this is how the plates look like if we take a cross section. So, this kind of uh, channel will be there because this is the this is the inlet channel and it is spread across the the whole leaf or the or the plate. From from this section we feed the inlet ok. Uh, the cleaning is also a bit easy we can dismantle this the whole frame and plate assembly and we can clean it effectively. So, uh, this is the leaf filter. Okay. So, the advantage of the filter press if we see because of its basic simplicity the filter press is versatile and may be used for a wide range of material under varying operating condition of cake thickness and the pressure. So, various pressure differential can be created across the uh, um, across the uh, you know filter um, uh, filter medium and then this different for the for different material also this can be used. It provides a large filtering area on a small floor space and few additional units are needed. Okay. So, be, because we are stacking more and more plates on a on a horizontal area most joints are external and leakage is easily detected. High pressure operation is usually possible and it is equally suitable whether the cake or the liquid is the main product. Yeah. Now, there is some disadvantage associated with it, this method as well. It is intermittent in operation and continual dismantling is apt to cause high wear on the cloths. And despite the improvement mentioned previously, it is fairly heavy on labor. So, although some modification has been done, but high labor in intensive method it is. So, these are the disadvantages. Now, the uh, in, in the filters the last category is the centrifugal filters. So, we, we normally uh, create a pressure drop across which the filtration can takes place. Now, instead of that pressure drop in centrifugal filtration we are using the centrifugal force. Okay. So, based on centrifugal force we try to uh, channelize or try to throw the slurry towards the filter uh, towards the, the perforated uh, filter medium or filter cloth and then uh, it will uh, you know the, the filtration will takes place. Okay. So, instead of a pressure force centrifugal force is used here to cause the flow of slurry in a filter the cake of granular solid that is being deposited in the uh, inner layer of the perforated uh, plate. Okay. So, on the perforated plate there will be a there will be a residue and there will be a uh, deposition also. So, granular solid is deposited on the filter medium held in a rotating basket. So, obviously, this should this have to be a rotating this have to be a uh, cylindrical or um, this barrel kind of system and it is rotating continuously. So, that the centrifugal uh, force can be utilized for filtration. This can be washed easily and uh, then uh, we can spun it dry. This consists of a basket in which the mixture of the solid and liquid 
or mixture of two liquids is rotated at a high speed and that is separated into its constituent by the action of centrifugal force. So, whether the solid or uh, liquid we are taking or two different density liquids we are taking. Okay. So, in, in that case if it, it may be a liquid liquid uh, mixture or solid and liquid mixture. So, mostly filtration we do when there is any uh, even if it is low, but some concentration of solid should be there. So, that will be uh, that will be deposited on the filter medium and the clear filtered will be taken out. So, this is very effective because in, in some cases uh, when the um, you know the pressure difference we, we cannot create enough to cause this uh, cause this filtration that time we can use this one. So, that we can get a um, higher uh, higher force to cause the filtration. Then advantage and disadvantage. So, advantage of a centrifuge it is very compact occupying very little floor space. It is capable of handling slurries with high proportion of solid and the final product has generally a very low moisture content if compared to a filter cake of similar material. So, because of the centrifugal force it is constantly uh, you know having the having the higher pressure differential and the moisture will be total most of the moisture uh, of the cake has been separated and as going as a filtrate. Disadvantage is that it is a batch process and it involves a considerable labor cost making the process expensive because uh, we need to dismantle it and then clean it properly all the deposition in the in the surface and then again assemble uh, and then we can use it. So, that is why it, it is a labor intensive method. Application of solid or liquid filtration, it is used mainly in the uh, improvement of the appearance of, of texture or uh, or uh, you know um, uh, to, to get a good appearance of a solution. For example, if we are taking some uh, fruit juices and there is some suspended particle and um, uh, that may not be liked by the consumer or some uh, you know uh, the fraction of seed etcetera is there. So, we need to make it a clarified juice. So, we filter it and to get a uh, good clear solution. Okay. So, improvement in the appearance of solution that is one then uh, mouth washes etcetera. Then another thing is removal of potential irritants. For example, from the eye drop preparation or, or solution applied to mucous membrane. Okay. So, whatever the irritant are there that is being uh, filtered by uh, this uh, application. Then recovery of desired solid material from suspension or slurry because sometime dissolved material is of interest not only the filtrate. So, in that case uh, if we apply uh, heat for removal of the water and then we want to get the uh, material it may not work because sometime the heat sensitive materials are there. So, filtration is very easy and uh, low cost method for, for that matter when we want to desire the solid material from the suspension or slurry. And we can we can use it for the crystallization process also to recovery of the crystallization crystals. Then certain operations such as extraction of vegetable uh, drugs with a solvent, then detection of microorganism present in the liquids. So, so when we want to extract the solvent, sometimes we make a uh, micelle of the of the uh, product from which we are uh, extracting the. Uh, you know essential uh, components or extraction and then we uh, we mix it with a with a solvent and then go for filtration so that we can get the component extracted in the solvent so these are the common application where filtration is being used now uh, coming to the sedimentation Sedimentation is very uh, easy method 
and most commonly used in the uh, in the you know separation mechanical separation processes and if we keep the material for for some longer time for for a suspension or solution we keep it for a longer time we may get three distinct layer in it first layer will give you a clear filtrate okay the upper layer will give you a clear filtrate and then at the middle you may observe a uniform composition layer okay you may get a uniform composition layer that there still the particles are about to settle which will be settled if you keep it for a further longer period and at the bottom you will get a heavy deposition of the um, of the insoluble impurities okay so sedimentation generally occurs because of the gravitational motion and this uh, most commonly performed when the concentration is high. So, this is uh, as I said that three for, for clarification of uh, mini material we can we can use this method where the bigger particles or higher concentration of the solid will be settled down at the bottom because of the gravity flow. And in case of a continuous thickener the liquid is collected from the top and sludge is taken from the bottom because the upper liquid which is which is you know the clear liquid or clarified liquid will be at the top. So, that is collected and the sludge is collected from the bottom. Now, the velocity of raising the fluid in a thickener can be given as follows V u that will be equal to capital F minus L into d w by d t by a into rho. So, this v u is the upward velocity of the flow of the liquid capital F is the mass ratio of the liquid to solid in the feed. That means, when we are putting the slurry into the uh, thickening thickener. Uh, okay. So, then what will be the concentration of the liquid to solid. Okay. And then when we are getting the uh, L, L means the mass ratio of the liquid to solid in the underflow liquid. D w by d t is the mass rate of feed of the solid and rho is the density of the liquid, A is the settling area in the tank. So, in the sedimentation the gravitational force is used to separate the particulate material from the fluid streams obviously and the partic particles are usually solid, but they either be small droplets of the liquid or gas. So, generally solid uh, particle we handle, but maybe uh, some uh, liquid particles also will be settled. Sedimentation used in food industries to remove the debris from the raw material. Then to separate the crystal from the mother liquor and dust from the air. And sedimentation uh, the, the principle of how we calculate the uh, velocity that follows from the Stokes law. So, uh, if we see this kind of a arrangement is normally um, done where the, where the slurry is fed from the bottom this is the inlet section and then it is spread continuously in the whole uh, whole um, system or the tank and then when the sedimentation will takes place that is the uh, higher concentration of the solid particle will settle, settle down at the bottom the sludge collection trough is there and from where this is collected and the, uh, the decantation or the outflow or the uh, clear uh, liquid that can be collected from the top. There is a also sludge scrapper arm is provided. Now, uh, then we will see that how using the Stokes law we can uh, calculate the, um, the you know velocity settling velocity. So, Stokes law states that the force that retard a sphere moving through 
uh, viscous fluid is directly proportional to the velocity of the sphere and the radius of the sphere and the viscosity of the fluid. Okay. And for that we have certain assumption that we have assumed that the particles those are uh, you know suspended in the in the material. So, those are of spherical shape and we also assume that the fluid is flowing in a in a uh, laminar flow and the composition is uniform the composition of the material is uniform composition of the uh, solid particle and also of the fluid that is uniform and the particle surface are smooth that that is also one assumption particles do not interfere with each other okay so these are the basic assumptions that we uh, take while uh, doing the uh, you know uh, doing the derivation or mathematical expression to to express the uh, settling of a sedimentation or settling of a particle using stokes law so as the grain begins to settle or the particle begins to settle what are the forces that will act on that body so basic obviously first thing is the gravity because it is falling at the bottom because of the uh, gravity force only however there will be buoyancy force and drag force also okay so the force of gravity that exceed the combined force of buoyancy and drag then only the particle will begin to settle okay so when it tries to fall the opposite force that the uh, the liquid uh, you know exert on the on the particle that is the drag and buoyancy also that is acting on the upward okay so if we we consider like a cylindrical um, a cylindrical channel is there where a, a particle we have taken and that is falling so the force the two force that is acting on it upward direction that is f b buoyancy force and f d and here f g that is the gravitational force is acting. So, when the gravitational force is at least equal or greater then uh, this will uh, will be settled. So, we will balance this or we equate this with the buoyancy force and drag force. So, for spherical particle we can write this as first is the gravitational force that is 4 by 3 pi r cube okay 4 by 3 pi r cube that is the volume into rho s that density of the solid into g okay gravitational force and here we have buoyancy that is 4 by 3 pi into r cube into rho f where this is the density of the fluid into g okay so the the buoyancy is because whatever mass is ha it has been displaced that is re replaced or displaced that has been uh, you know exerting an upward directional force on the particle plus this is the drag force c d into r square pi rho f into v square by 2 ok. So, pi r square this is the projected area of the particle and rho f is the density of the fluid v square by 2 this is the velocity and uh, so when we equate this when we equate this we can uh, find an, an expression of velocity that is our ultimate aim so we can write cd into uh, d in rho f into v square that is equal to 4 by 3 d rho s minus rho f into g rho s and rho f is the density of the solid particle and density of the fluid respectively. So, if we get the expression of uh, velocity here we, we are getting v square equal to 4 by 3 d into g by c d into rho s minus rho f by rho f c d is drag coefficient. So, this value is 24 by NRE 24 by Reynolds number. So, we will use that that one that one and NRE is again rho v d by mu. So, rho is rho of the fluid it will be 
Okay. So, we will put this value of C d here in the in this equation and finally, we will get the expression of velocity that is the settling velocity of the particle that is 1 by 18 mu d square g rho s minus rho f. Mu is the viscosity of the fluid, g is acceleration due to gravity, rho s and rho f is the density of the solid and fluid. Okay. So, uh, let us see one problem calculate the settling velocity of dust particle of a 60 mm and of 10 mm diameter in air at 21 degree Celsius and 100 kilo Pascal pressure. Assume that the particles are spherical and of the density 1 to 80 kg per meter cube and the viscosity of the air is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 Newton second per meter square density of the air is 1.2 kg per meter cube. So, with this data first we try to see that what will be the velocity of two different particle dia 60 mm and 10 mm. Okay. So, for first case 60 mm uh, that is the uh, d square into g. Uh, so, this is 60 m okay, d square into g into rho s minus rho f density difference that is equal to uh, divided by 18 mu, mu value is given 1.8 into 10 power minus 5. So, we are getting 0 0.14 meter per second. Okay. This is 60 mm. So, we have converted to uh, meter this is 9.81 and 1 to 80 kg per meter cube this is also 1.2 kg per meter cube for air. Now, for 10 mm particle since V m is proportional to the square of the diameter. So, if we can use this directly using 10 mm and all the value or simply we can calculate from this because the ratio of these two will be same when all other parameter that means, the density of solid and the and the uh, fluid viscosity and everything are same. So, V m can be easily calculated as 0 0.14 into 10 by 60 square that is 3.9 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter per second. Okay. So, then checking the Reynolds number for the 60 mm particle, what will be the Reynolds number? Rho V d by mu. So, rho is uh, 1.2 because it is density of the fluid we need to take. So, 1.2 kg per meter cube this one. Then velocity of that 60 mm particle that is 0 0.14 meter per second and then uh, d is 16 to 10 power Okay, 60 mm is there. So, so it will be 60 mm. So, 16 to 10 power minus 3 and okay. So, here it will be mm to meter. So, 16 to 10 power minus 3 it will be and divided by uh, 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5. This is the value of mu that is given. Okay. So, here we will we will have this uh, value some so around five sixty will be the will be the value. Okay. And uh, so, this is how we can solve if the particle diameter is given and the density of the fluid uh, whether it is air or whether it is some uh, liquid water or something that is given. So, using this uh, equation we can calculate it. So, another problem is a continuous separating tank is to be designed to 
follow after a water washing plant for liquid oil estimate the necessary area for the tank if the oil on leaving the washer is in the form of globules of 5.1 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter diameter the feed concentration is 4 kg water to 1 kg oil and the leaving water is effectively oil free because it has to be uh, it has to be separated properly so it will be oil free and the feed rate is 1000 kg per hour the density of the oil is 894 kg per meter cube and the temperature of the oil and the water is 38 degree celsius assume stokes law viscosity of the water is given as 0 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 newton second per meter square so what we'll do again we'll use this equation v equal to 1 by 18 mu into d square g into rho s minus rho f so uh, d is the diameter of the particle here so vm will be 5.1 into 10 power minus 5 this is the particle size given square into 9.81 into 1000 minus 894 so uh, because it is water and oil uh, okay so what was given uh, 1000 kg the feed rate is this one and okay the density of the oil is given as this one and density of water is taken like that Okay. So, uh, divided by 18 mu. So, we are getting the velocity 2.15 into 10 power minus 4 meter per second or meter per hour we can convert it. Now, it is it is given that the ratio of uh, that is the uh, that is the ratio of the C concentration ratio of the oil in the feed that is 4 kg water 1 kg oil and when it is leaving there is no oil okay so ratio of the solid to liquid if if we consider that way or if we can consider here the concentration of the uh, oil that has to be separated in the total feed stream uh, or or the or the oil is to water and in the exit also the oil is to water so then we can take f is equal to 4 and L equal to 0 because there is no oil. Okay. So, here it is 4 is to 1 and there is uh, 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 there is 0 L will be 0 d w by d t is the flow of minor component. So, 1000 divided by 5 because the total is entering uh, uh, the total feed is entering in that 4 parts is of water and 1 part is of uh, oil. So, so, together if 1000 kg per hour is the rate, so the rate of minor component will be 200 kg per hour and the area is 4 into 200 divided by 0 0.77 this is the uh, velocity and this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, density. So, 4 area will be 4 times this 200 because uh, the, the mass flow rate if you want to calculate 200 will be for 1 fraction. So, 4 fraction is that is that constitute the the, uh, the water stream that is coming. So, 4 into 200 divided by 0 0.77 into 1000. So, the area we are getting 1 meter square. Okay, so, we will stop here and we will continue in the next class. Thank you.